Alrighty, so we're all going to begin on our back today. Make sure your props are nearby. All right, so first of all, we'll just kind of rock it in, flex our feet. I like to place one hand just below the knee on the shin and give resistance here. Look opposite your knees and kind of fight it. Make sure you're flexing your feet. That'll activate your legs and protect your back. All right. All right, so it's really kind of hard when we're at home, you really get distracted by your surroundings. You know, there's a dust bunny or something I need to do. So if it's available, when you can, close your eyes. And when you do that, you can really tune into your body more. You can feel this beautiful massage you're having right now. And go, ooh, ah, feels good. All right. A lot of us are on different surfaces. I'm on a carpet, on a mat, on a towel, and my balance is woo, cranking up. I feel my whole body shaking in a lot of poses. So if you see me fall over, it's okay. <laughs> so from here, we're gonna place our feet on the floor. Um, you wanna take your blanket or your block. You have several options. You can place the blanket up under your hips. Feels kinda good. Or a lot of us have been sitting more, a nice option is to place the blanket, sit up, and place it between your shoulder blades or your block, and let your head go back. Um, make sure it's sideways between your shoulder blades. And if you find your head is too arch, place another blanket up under your head, okay? You don't want to overextend the cervical spine right now. We're just trying to find a little bit of space as we open up. And once you nestle in, check in if you want your legs long, your knees bent, maybe knees touching. If it's sustainable, feet touching, knees open to the side. You want something that's not going to cause you stress. So if the legs are long and it's pulling at your lower back, go ahead and bend your knees, right? Have a nice inhale through your nose, exhale side out your mouth, and ah, just be. Let's begin to awaken our breathing, deeply breathing in and out through our noses, constricting the backs of our throats. And just begin to tune in, watching your breath from beginning to end. Try to truly watch it from beginning to end. So if your eyes are open here, you're probably a little distracted. Just watch that natural energy, enjoy the pause at the beginning and the end of the breath. Let it just be as long as it wants to be. And just begin to feel the expansion, the broadening of the chest. And as you exhale, that slow recede back down to the pelvic floor. And maybe begin to feel yourself expand front to back, side to side. Just finding something interesting that you can focus on as you breathe. Finding gratitude within that we can breathe so freely and that remembering when we breathe deeply like this in our Ujjayi breathing, constricting the back of our throat and lengthening our breaths, we are utilizing more of the capacity of our lungs and keeping them healthier and cleansed. Maybe begin to feel your shoulders soften a little more into the earth here. A little less tension in the neck and the jaw. So when you're ready, we'll bring our hands to heart center and set our intention for our practice today. And when you're ready, just remove your props, set them aside. And once again, we'll hug our knees in, flex our feet, draw the knees slowly side to side. Once again, looking opposite the knees and just letting the neck join that spinal twist party. Maybe lengthen your tailbone further away or draw the knees in closer to your chest. Noticing what feels better on your back and hips today. All of us are tight in different areas on a different day. So it's all about being intuitive and finding that transition that releases tension for you. So from here, we're going to find a bridge. We're going to set our feet down, walk our heels a little towards our fingertips, rock our arms in towards our um, rib cage, press to the heels, inhale, lift the hips, squeeze the glutes in our thighs, lift your heels, exhale, slowly round side down. Once again, maybe close the eyes, inhale, lift, sink the movements with your breath, all right? Feel that nice, slow wave. Recognize that the movement or the breath finishes first. 
We're truly trying to move with our breath. Practicing yoga, sinking everything up, mind, body, breath. Lifting those heels allows you to round that spine down, flattening and we lift up. So the next time we lift our hips, we're going to add the arms as we inhale them up and reach past our ears and exhale, bring everything back down and sink where we can. Usually here when I add the arms, my arms are either lagging or quicker. So it takes a moment to truly sink everything up and find a nice fluid flow here. Jennifer and Missy, I hope y'all are able to join us too today. Get a little tension worked out of you guys. All right, so let's leave our arms down this next time. Give the hips a little wiggle, rock the knees side to side. All right, we're gonna inhale, lift our hips. If it's available, lift your right knee. It's bent, extend it to the sky. Bend the knee, place the foot down, inhale, lift the hips again higher, lift the left foot up, extend the leg, bend the knee, left foot down. Let's do two more each side. Lift the right foot, extend the right leg, bend the knee, foot down. Feel that pause where the hips lift again. It's nice release, nice transition. One more, you're breathing, exhaling and inhaling. But just inhale on that hip lift, find that space. And when you're done, feet down, lift the hips, slowly round it down again. And let's find that transition again where we draw our knees side to side. Recognize if you're feeling a little tension in the lower back and hips, maybe hugging in a little more, stretching it out. You might even reach up and hug like a. That feels good too, tucking the chin, lifting the head. Breathing, feeling that compression, nice. All right, so we're gonna work our way to standing. If it's available, a few egg roll, rock and rolls, fingertips behind the knees, as few or as many as you'd like, or you can roll over to your knees and come on up, maybe coming up standing. So I've said this a lot in the last week, we're working towards, if you're egg roll, rock and rolling, or however you're standing up, try not to use your hands too much, all right? There's been a study done that the, the little or less that you use your hands to stand up um, affects the longevity of your life. So that makes sense, the poor activation and strength within the body. All right, so at the top of our mat, hands to hips, pressing down through the feet, lift your toes, fan them out, set them down one at a time, slowly. And as you do this, you should begin to feel the inner thighs hug, Pelvic floor engage, let's lift it up to the spine, release the hands to the from the hips, and give your shoulders a few rolls. All right, palms presented forward, extend more through the throat, feel the crown of the head reaching for the sky. Have a nice exhale to soften the shoulders from the ears. And as we're here in mountain pose, if you need to just wiggle out the neck a little more, recognize that you need that transition to release more tension. Mindful movement is what it's all about. All right, let's inhale our arms up. Palms together, exhale, fold, forward, fold. Bend those knees a bit. Inhale, find flat back. And exhale, fold. All right, let's inhale, reverse it up again. Get some nice rotation through the shoulders, maybe a little back bend if it feels good. And exhale, fold. When you find flat back or half lift, fingertips can be to the floor or on the shins. Just press away. Feel those shoulders peel from the ears. It's a strong movement. And we'll exhale, fold. We're gonna have our hand to the floor. If you need a block or a book, make sure you get it. We're going to inhale to flat back, bring our right hand a little forward so our right side body can open up. And exhale, left arm to sky. You can bend your right knee as much as you like, but wherever you are, pull your right hip crease back a little bit. Feel the rib cage become more balanced on each side. You might look down, feel that opposing spiral if it's fine. To the side or up at your breathing. Feel the spine telescope, it's long. Tailbone to crown of the head, that belly's working. And on your next exhale, just fold. Surrender it all the way through the throat and the head. All right, let's inhale and find flat back again. Left hand a little forward, exhale, right arm. 
sky. Once again, maybe bending that left knee, that's okay. That's finding range of motion in your body, but pull that left hip crease back, even if the knee stays bent. Once again, maybe looking down. Nice twist. We need to honor our twisting right now to keep tension away and aggravation. Breathing, feel that space, detoxing twist here. And on our exhale, we'll fold, forward, fold. Inhale, look forward, find space again. And exhale, fold as we step back to plank. Press away from the earth, lengthen tailbone through heels. As always, you can modify lowering knees. Just make sure the hips are back in tabletop and you're still barreling through the chest, pressing the earth away, belly button through the spine. Breathing, and if you get fatigued in full plank, modify later on. Go slowly if you like through vinyasa, that's gonna amp it up too. So when you're ready, going through your vinyasa, exhaling down chest first. Think of that nose coming down, maybe extra chaturanga dandasana. Flatten those feet in cobra or up dog. And on your exhale, knee and down dog. Breathing that down dog. Let's bend one knee at a time, rolling on our toes. Maybe drawing the nose around. Mindfully feel that pelvic floor belly engaged so the hips can lift up and back and you're pressing away from the earth. The arms are hugging towards the ears, but yet the triceps are rolling out the side and back. You might bend the knees a little bit, just find a little more space in the hips, back or shoulders. Or it just feels good to bend and straighten. Just feeling the body awaken here. Warm up. When you're ready, have a nice exhale, maybe sigh it out. All right, so press away, try to draw your, let's lift our heels high and draw your chest in as much as you can to the legs. Breathing, chin is tucked on an inhale, slowly wave it to plank, slowly unfurling through the core. And exhale, slowly round it back up to a nice deep edge. Bend the knees if you need to. Remember, inhale, wave into play. Really creating some heat here now, moving slowly with our breath. Feel the hips lift everything up and back. All right, staying here in down dog, bottom of your next exhale. Let's walk, step, or float. Feet between hands. All right, nice. Inhale, look forward and find space. And exhale, fold all the way through. Feel the surrender, press to the feet, inhale, reverse it up. Lift from the heart, sun salutation A, meeting in down dog, exhale, fold. Inhale, look forward and find space, no hurry. Exhale, fold as you step or float, meeting in down dog. Once you get in down dog, maybe a little exhale out the mouth or a sigh. Nice. So let's slowly inhale right leg to sky. You can always be on hands and knees today too. Remember that, okay? You need to modify. We're going to exhale slowly, knee to nose. Tuck the chin, maybe touch knee to nose. Your back heel lifts high. And we'll inhale that leg all the way back up. Exhale, knee to nose again. Look forward. How controlled can you set that foot inside your hand? Ooh, find a bit of flat back, engaging the core. Left hand down, exhale, right arm to sky. Once again, you can look down, it's an opposing spiral. Lengthen through that back heel. Maybe you can bend that front knee a little more. And if you need any kind of movement here for the arm, the wrist, the shoulder, let it be what it is and enjoy, okay? Beautiful. So our right hand comes down. We're gonna find a bit of flat back awareness here. Focal point forward, maybe a playful hinge. If the foundation and core allow our hands to the thigh. And we'll inhale up, crescent lunge. And on your exhale, soften those shoulders from the ear. And breathe. Feel the lift of the heart. The shoulders just softening, the shoulder blades onto the back and hugging in so the heart can lift. All right, we're working on our balance today. So find a focal point in front of you. We are going to warrior three. You can always bring hands to hips to help with balance. We're going to shift forward onto the front foot and then lift our back leg. And then find your edge of warrior three. Try not to let the chest, um, um, the leg lift more than the chest drops, okay? 
Breathing, you don't want to be like a broken umbrella, that chest down with the leg lower. Breathing here. All right, we're going to slowly stand up and bring our left knee, our back leg forward, hands to hips here. Flex your foot. This carpet really rocks my balance. All right, so from here, press to the ground and foot, telescope the spine. And let's take our knee out to the side and forward. Out to the side and forward. Breathing, softening here. We're gonna go into our tree pose. Maybe the foot stays to the floor or to the calf, or you can use your hand to lift. If you have half lotus, feel free. All right, press the foot into the leg and the leg into the foot, and allow the knee to open to a nice edge. You don't have to force it. You might bring hands to heart, or any variation of tree that you like with your focal point and your arms. My whole body is wiggling here and I love it. That's burning calories and my body trying to find its center of gravity. So if it's available here, keeping hands to heart or hands to hips, press them firmly. We'll begin to lift that leg off into warrior three. Find a nice focal point, find the edge. Slowly reaching back to crescent lunge, inhaling the arms up. Exhale, reach, feel the space here, all the way through the back heel, stepping back, going to your vinyasa, or just meeting in down dog. <sighs> Be sure to have a nice little exhale, a sigh when you get in down dog. That allows that sympathetic nervous system to just kind of release a little bit. <sighs> release tension quicker. All right, try to isolate the movement. Try not to wiggle the whole body as we inhale left leg to the sky. Exhale smoothly, knee to nose, maybe touch knee to nose, tuck that chin. Inhale it up. Exhale, knee to nose again, and really fight for it if you can control and slowly set that foot inside your hand. Inhale to flat back and exhale, left arm to the sky. Always exhaling on your twist, press away from the earth, and really reach hand to hand. Feel the chest. Just broaden here and open up. Once again, maybe looking down. My favorite, since I found this closing spiral business, I love it. Feels good. Maybe bend the knee a little deeper, lengthen through the back heel, feel that back leg working. And we'll release the hand down, flat back. Maybe a playful hinge, maybe also means, maybe not. And inhale up, crescent lunge, enjoy the exhale. Feel the stress release from the shoulders. And breathe and be. Feel what's going on. Feel that right thigh spiraling forward. Feel yourself lengthen through that back heel. Feel the activation of the legs here. So once again, we'll be going to warrior three, maybe hands to hips. Shift forward, pause. The back leg's very active as it lifts and you press to the grounded foot. Find your edge of warrior three. You can always fly the arms. Any variation is available. And we're gonna slowly straighten up, bringing that back leg forward and up, hands to hips, flex the foot, feel the center here, and then begin to take the knee out to the side and forward. So recognize that the chest is lifted and you're pressing back, you're telescoping to the neck. You've gotta keep the core engaged here, or you're gonna become like that wind soft at the tire store. Going everywhere. So when you're ready, find your edge of tree on this side. Don't force it to be the same as the other. Our joints vary from side to side. Press into the leg and the leg into the foot and feel that extra activation to allow that knee to stabilize and the leg to stay out to the right. And if that's not working, just keep the foot off the leg and keep the knee lifted when we were opening it out to the side. All right, our joints are different. And we're breathing, finding your edge of tree here. Feeling the body working. The breath softens a little in tree. We're not working the body quite as much, but you're still ujjayi breathing. Maybe hands to heart or hands to hip as we slowly reach it back. Warrior three, try to control it, fight for it. And then reach it to that crescent lunge. Inhaling arms up. Exhale, reach. Don't miss those transitions. They're sweet as anything too. Vinyasa. Feeding in, down dog. Remember, it's how we get there. We don't get there and just start breathing. Control every ounce of it. 
Maybe drop a knee and a hip in here, getting some twists going on. Feels really good to the lower back and the hips. All right, when you're ready, walk, step, or float, feet between hands. Do you have any Shakti kicks or handstand kicks? You're welcome to do that. Inhale, look forward and find space. And exhale, fold. Inhale, reverse it up again, maybe a little back bend. And once again, meeting in, down dog, exhale, fold. Inhale, look forward and find space. Exhale, fold as you step or float. Just breathe. Do you want to savor a little deeper in cobra or up dog? Do so. Nice. So we're going to amp it up a little bit here. I'm going to start with our, my left leg first so you can see me. And if um, what I'm about to do is not going to work for you, feel free to come to hands and knees and maybe just lift um, your left leg and pulse it. Or take bend the knee and take it out to the side. Okay? So we're going to inhale our left leg up. Exhale, bring our knee towards our right underarm. Spin your back foot down sideways and extend your leg over to the right. It can be on the floor or up, maybe right arm up. And then hand down, foot down, we'll lift our right leg up. Roll to the inside edge of your left foot, extend that leg over to the left, maybe open up. And we'll do each side one more time. Just kind of fun to move, twist, and use the core, create more heat. All right, and we're in down dog. Let's inhale that left leg up again. Exhale super slow, knee to nose. Set the foot inside your hand. Flat back. Uh-oh. I am low on battery, guys. Oh, dear. I'm at 10%. I might have to run and get a charger. Sorry, I charged it earlier. We're going to set our foot inside of our hand. Lower our back knee, flatten the foot. Inhale our arms up. Interlace our fingers, your pointer fingers are up. And exhale, we're gonna slowly round it down. You're gonna tuck your chin, hug your arms towards the ears, belly to the spine for three breaths. All right, press through both feet and we'll inhale, round it up. Maybe exhale, a little back bend. We're gonna straighten up, release the hands, reach, curl the back toes under. Let's press your both feet and lift the back leg. Nice. Now we are stepping to dancer pose. So hands to hips first. Let's lift our back knee forward again. All right, left arm goes up and hugs. Your right arm comes down, palm open to the side. Don't rotate the wrist. Just reach for the big toe side of the foot. All right, hug the legs together. Press to the foot, really reach. And let's hinge at the left hip. Find our edge of dancer. You can always go to the wall or use a piece of furniture. Curl that big toe back. You might reach more through the left hand. If your balance is good, you might seek your half bow, reaching that left hand towards the floor or a block. But you gotta come back up to the dancer. Yes, any variation here with that left arm. All right, and we'll reach again into dancer, reach it back. Crescent lunge, inhaling up. Exhale, take it down, vinyasa. I'm going to run and get a charger real quick. So some of you might be holding that down dog. Some of you might have taken a little break. But wherever you are, I hope you're still breathing. All right, and we will be working to our other side here in just a moment as I logistically get this thing closer to the plug. <laughs> Sorry about that. I thought I was totally prepared. All right, just make sure you can still see me and it's all good. All right, working to the other side. 
Let's inhale, right leg to sky. Exhale, bring your knee towards your left underarm. Spin that back heel down sideways. Maybe extend that leg to the left. Arm up. Then release the foot down. Bring that left foot out to the side. Right hand up. You don't have to lift the leg. Just shift foot to foot, side to side. Nice. And this time, down dog. Inhaling right leg up. Exhale, knee to nose, no hurry, five for it, set the foot down, five for it, flat back, lower the back knee down, flatten the foot, inhale the arms up. Feel that back foot really working, interlace, lift, inhale, and exhale, round it down, hug those arms, three breaths here, tucking the chin if you can, press to that front foot in the back. And on your next inhale, we'll lift up. Exhale, maybe a little back bend. Straighten up, release the hands. You can always bring hands to thigh. Curl the back toes under, lift the back leg. Hands to hips as we shift forward and lift that back knee. Flex the foot. Right arm up, left arm out to the side. Lower the knee down and reach for the big toe side of the foot. Curl the big toe back, flexing the foot. Hug the legs, reach, and then hinge. You want to keep a nice tension between the hand and the foot there. Find your edge and breathe. Feel that grounded foot working. Maybe you can press the foot into the hand. The knee might lift higher. You can seek that half bow, reaching the hand down. Lifting it back up. Finding the edge each time, pausing, not just shifting and not concentrating, and then reaching back to that crescent lunge, inhaling up, exhale, reach, feel the space, feel every ounce of it, the yasa or not. Nice, exhale, let it go. All right, if you think you're going to need your towel to interlace behind, take time to have it nearby your mat. We're going to inhale right leg to sky and exhale, bend that knee in the air. And try to reach your toe towards your left shoulder. Remember, you can run hands and knees. Press more to that right hand. Feel that deep stretch and activation. Maybe draw circles with your toes. Or look up under the left arm or up and over the left shoulder and deeper back bend. Inhale, lengthen the leg. Exhale, knee to nose, no hurry. Set it with control inside the hand. Make sure if you need to lift that ankle and get it there, do so. All right, flat back. We're going into warrior one foot. So our back foot comes a little forward and a little to the left. Toes mostly forward. Pull that right hip crease back. Press through the back heel. And maybe you'll find a playful hinge here. And on an inhale, lift it up. So truly just enjoying the transitions and um, the quality of the foundation. Press to the back heel, spiral the left thigh forward, maybe bend the front knee a little more and feel that smooth stretch in the back leg. You can always back off. If you want to feel the quality of your foundation, do this. On our exhale, we'll take our hands behind, interlacing, lift it without the towel. Inhale, lift from the heart. Exhale, lead with the heart. Bend through the throat and tuck the chin. Let the hands lift comfortably away from the hips. Maybe track your front knee to the right, but belly through the spine. Try to reach your back to the sky. Nice. Press through both feet. We're going to inhale, round it up slowly, and we're going to go two more times up and down with our breath now. Exhale, wave it forward. Feel the burn in that right leg. Nice. Inhale, round it up. Use that back leg. Keep spiraling that thigh forward. One more time. All right, this time we're gonna take it down here and release both hands down, all right? Both hands inside the feet, you might step back to vinyasa or there's an arm balance available at the Padapindasana one. Right middle finger behind the heel, left hand in alignment for plank. Lift your back heel, begin to slide the foot away. Press through the hands, hug the arms, begin to bend the elbows. Drop your left rib cage into the left elbow. Shift forward, right leg is out to the right. Reach to both legs. And then you'll step it back. 
vinyasa or not. Ah. Nice job, guys. Have a nice exhale, side out. It's always put the water anywhere along the way. So once in down dog, we'll inhale left leg to sky and exhale, bend that knee, reach for your right shoulder. Feel yourself press and reach to that left hand. Feel that deepening of the activation. Maybe draw circles with the toes. Keep breathing. And we'll inhale left leg to sky, exhale knee to nose, control. Set it inside the hand. Flat back first, engaging. Then right foot goes a little to the right. Pull the left hip crease down, press into both knees, and enjoy that transition as you inhale it up. Yeah, no hurry. It's really sweet. That's where I get my jam. Press to that back heel, spiral the right back forward, maybe deep in the lunge. But all the while, you're feeling the telescoping of the spine. Don't feel like you're leaning forward, press from the lower back. You're nice and centered to the hips here. So when you're ready, on an exhale, take those hands behind and release me. Inhale, lift from the heart. Exhale, wave it down. Tuck the chin. Too much on the shoulders, just bring hands to hips or to the floor. Belly through the spine, breathing. This is great for lowering blood, blood pressure when we tuck our chin like this deeply. All right, inhale, slowly round it up, lifting the gaze lats. Nice, smooth movement through the whole body. Feel it extend to the back heel as you wave it forward. Inhale, round it up. All right, exhale, take it down. All right, let's release both hands down. Recognize if you want to play a foot of vinyasa. Maybe left middle finger behind the heel, right hand in alignment for play. Lift the back heel, begin to slide it away. Elbows hug. Looking to the left, dropping into the right rib cage with that right elbow. Breathing, vinyasa or not, even if you just try, getting that body twisted up a little. All right, looks kind of good. But watch the body, okay? All right. So I got a little challenge here for you. We're going to go into side plank. You can always lower the knees down and you'll take your left foot out to the side, right leg long through. Um, gate pose. You might just keep it in plank and wait to um, down dog to get in plank, or if you can, lift the right leg. Now we'll rotate it to plank. We'll roll to the outside edge of the feet and maybe take the right arm up. Wherever you are, maybe reach that right arm past your ear. You might lift your right leg. Nice. To the left face. Right hand comes down, we're going back to down dog, or hands and knees. This time, right knee might come out to the side, for gate pose, everything will be in a straight line, your right hand, your knee, your foot. And then maybe lift the left leg or not, as you wave it to plank, and roll to the right side of the feet. Maybe close that left arm up. I like to look down for balance. Keep the toes open, maybe reach the left arm past the ear, you might lift the left leg. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Smile, smile, smile. Ten down. Down dog. Woo, nice job. We're gonna come forward, forward fold, walk step and float. Inhale, look forward and find space and exhale, fold. Inhale, reverse it on up. Exhale, hands to heart center. Grounding breath or a sip of water. Oh yeah. My little heater going, it's really dry in here. And you don't have to use the heater, but if you like one, go for it. Find a small room if you can. Start it up a good hour early. Good thing. All right, so we're just going into um, to chair here, but we want our big toes touching. We're going to twist, and I'll let you take it to your edge to arm balance, and we'll find some extra stretching for the feet. So let's inhale, arms up, really reach. Shift into the heels and exhale into chair. Breathe into the upper back, feel the lift of the heart, the shoulder blades down. Shift the hips back, maybe lower them. Hands to heart, we'll inhale and exhale, left arm outside the right leg. Right, and get to here too. All right, so from here, 
Get the left knee stripping forward. Pull the left hip crease back no matter what, wherever you are. Maybe lower the hips. Use your arm to press away from the leg and open the heart more to the side. If that's too much, you can always just hug the legs here with your hands. If that's too much, you can twist it. Breathing, telescope, feel long, tailbone in front of the head, maybe lower the hips again. You just don't want to look back at the body, tucking the chin here. You want to keep the neck active. So if you go straight into your side probe, feel free to. Otherwise, maybe bring spider fingers to the floor, lift your heels if the joints allow. You can always come out of this. Begin to squeeze the legs, press the shoulders back. Maybe you can bring hands to heart. You can stay anywhere along the way. Maybe find that revolve again. Or from here, even just flirting with your side crow. Your hands come off at a 45 degree angle. The left arm stays connected to the leg. Lift the hip, shift forward. Build a shelf and set the right hip on that left elbow. Keep shifting forward. And those legs will pop up, squeeze them. Looking to the left. Find your breath here, press away from the earth. Try not to let the head drop. And we'll work our way back. Maybe to hands to heart. This is great strengthening for the feet and ankles, good stretching. Then spider fingers to the floor. Exhale, fold, forward fold. Ah, the knees go yay, thanks for that. Maybe bend and straighten or massage. And what feels intuitive and keeps you present? Healthy floor belly strong, the feet are pressed, the legs are hugging. Yes. All right. Hands to the floor, inhale, look forward, find space. And exhale, fold, step or float, keep the neck long. As you step back to plank, try not to drop that gaze, tuck in the chin. You want to keep that long telescope through the whole body. Nice exhale, let it go. Transition it. All right, beautiful. So hands and knees if you like, as we inhale right leg to sky, exhale, bend that knee, press to the right hand, how control can you flip the dog if you choose to do so? Reach through the right hand, that counterbalance. Press to the heels, squeeze the glutes and inner thighs. Breathe. Nice back bend, lightening our mood. Wheel if it's available. Look back, reach. How control can you unflip? And then we'll spin that back heel down sideways. That right leg goes to the left. Open up the left arm. Press away from the earth. Head down. Inhale your right leg to sky. Exhale, knee to nose. Feel it. Then look forward, set the foot inside your hand, flat back. Have a nice exhale. Huh. Maybe it's just me all the talking. Spin your back heel down sideways. We're going to work to get to warrior two. So we're going to reach our left arm forward, opening our heart to the left. You might need your right arm to the thigh, or maybe you can just find a playful hinge here. If you want to amp it up a little, look at your left middle finger as you inhale up, warrior two. No depth exception here. All right, I'm going to switch around so I can see you. All right. So a lot of times we lean forward in warrior two, we want to be centered. So let's track that front knee towards the pinky toe. Roll that left thigh back and roll to the outside edge of your left foot. Feel that nice external rotation. Zip it up to the crown of the head. And now try to engage your hip points up with closing the book. Yes, feel that. And with all that activation, looking at your right middle finger, you might be able to just lower the hips down a little. The tension builds, just wiggle the wrists a little and breathe and breathe. Feel yourself pressing back into that left rib cage. You want to feel it active so you feel the rib cage nice and girding in to the spine. Breathing, right hand to sky, exhale back, peaceful warrior, heart lifting up and out of the spine. Maybe you want to bend the left arm and the right. So go across the arms, you don't have to touch hands. Lift from the heart. You can look up or down the left shoulder. Keep the strong lunge here. And we'll inhale up, warrior two. Exhale, hinge. Yes, right forearm to the thigh, left arm past the ear. Press away from the leg, opening the heart to the side. All right, so we're trying to keep everything nice in alignment here, straight line. You don't want to feel like we're leaning forward and the foot's out. 
If you're deeper here and you want to bring that arm inside the leg and press, or even hand to the floor, recognize that the hand needs to come outside the foot or inside to keep that pressing between the two pieces of glass of the body. Nice. So we're going to inhale up warrior two and straighten both legs. Setting up for triangle, you might even shorten your distance between the feet a little bit. Nice. And exhale, hinge. Rotate again. Press away from the leg. Feel that pressing between two glass, pieces of glass. Notice if your chest and shoulders drop forward. Press them back. Feel the lift and the extension between the arms and hands. All right, we're going to come on up. And we're going to work our way into eagle pose here. All right? So begin to bend your front knee. Bring hands to hips. Rotate your heart forward. And lift that back knee up. Flex the foot. All right, press your shoulders back. I got to quit looking at y'all. I'm falling here. All right, so bend your right knee a couple of times. Find a focal point. Find your center of gravity. Now keep your right knee bent. Bring your left leg on top of it. Squeeze. You can always keep hands on hips if you need to. We're going to bend our right arm and bring our left arm underneath for the round. You can always open up and hug the shoulders. So we're going to draw the elbows down into the chest and back. Feel your back fire up. All right, squeeze those legs. Maybe deepen the chair a little. All right, you can always stay here. If you want to play a little bit, we'll begin to hinge forward, lift the left leg, and fly our eagle into a warrior three. Squeeze those arms or let them fly. Reach a little further, but we're going to bring it back to that eagle to bend that right knee. Maybe take the left knee a little wider for rotation onto the leg. Nice deep chair, and then we'll fly it out. Really feel that expansion. Can you hold it? Feels good. And release it down. Ooh, wiggle it out. Feel that in my right ankle. That's good. And I'm wiggling on this carpet. I'm really loving it because I feel it later. <laughs> All right, so we're in mountain pose at the top of our mat here. But we want our big toes touching again as we set up to the other side. As we inhale our arms up, and exhale, shift into the heels as we go into chair. Shift those hips back. Lift from the heart. Feel the space as the shoulders drop from the ears. You can always open the arms a little wider. If it's hard to straighten the arms, take them wider. Yeah, that can help. All right, hands to heart. Inhale. And exhale, right arm outside the left. All right, opposite knee. Look and see if that right knee is drifting forward. Pull that right hip crease back, lower the hips, press away from the leg, and maybe you can open the heart gently a little more to the side. Maybe lower the hips again. How long do you feel to the spine? Do you feel balanced once back side to side? All right, once again, if you want to go straight into side crow, or once again, slide your fingers to the floor, lifting the hips, squeeze the legs, press the shoulders back, so building it step by step. Maybe hands to heart. Maybe that right arm outside the leg. I'm keeping too much my focal point slowly moving. We're playing into that side crow. You gotta lift those hips, shift forward, and then send them on. Squeeze those legs. Those toes are active. You're looking to the right. You're pressing away from your telescope to spine. You are ready. Maybe take it back. Handle it here. You can always go to a forward fold straight away. Holding it a little, feel everything working, trying to feel light and expansive. And then hands down, exhale, fold, forward fold. Once again, our knees and our back. Hey, party time. The knees time. Inhale, look forward, find space. And exhale, fold as you step or float, going through the yatsa, leading in down dog. Nice exhale, let it go. Once again, hands and knees are available. Inhale, left leg to sky. Exhale, bend that knee, press through the left hand. Use that left arm to reach. You choose to flip your dog to help control. Nice, press to the heels, squeeze the glutes, squeeze the inner thighs. 
building stability there. And breathe if you can, a few breaths. Then look back, reach. Inhale that left leg to side. And hands and knees and just pulse that leg. Or spin the right foot down sideways. Extend the leg over to the right on the floor or not. Right hand up. And down, inhale your left leg to sky, right heel towards earth, don't forget that. Exhale, knee to nose, lift the back heel. Step the foot down inside your hand. Get a flat back. All right, spin the back heel down sideways, heel to heel, feel the arch alignment. Right arm forward, peel it open. Maybe left arm to the thigh, or maybe you can play with the plate with the hinge. Extra challenge, keep the leg still as you can wherever you go. Maybe look at that right middle finger as you window it up. Ah. All right, so once again, let's build it. Tuck that front knee towards the pinky toe. Begin to roll your right thigh back and feel it roll into the outer edge of the back foot. Yes. Key, zip it up. Engage the hip points. Try to close them. And maybe do the lunge. I, so I encourage you, if any of you have a little mirror that you can or uh, bring in, this is a good time to see if you're leaning forward or passing back into the right rib cage. Just a little visual check in your alignment. Yes, you can always just place your hand here and feel that pressing into that right rib cage too. And we're breathing, we're looking at our left middle finger. You can always rotate the wrist a little, recognizing where you create um, unnecessary tension or activation. Left hand to sky, and we'll exhale back to peaceful warrior. Maybe bend one elbow or both. Just kind of feel good and finding space in your body, maybe deep in the lunge a little. And we'll inhale up warrior two, and exhale inch forward. Left forearm, not the elbow to the thigh, but the forearm. We're trying never to use our joints. Press away from whatever you're touching. And peel it open, open your heart more to the left. Keep that front knee bent. But you're pressing away, you're expanding, you're not sinking to gravity. Feel that back foot lifted for you. Nice. Press through both feet and pull up for your two. Straighten both legs, maybe shorten the distance a little. As we exhale, hinge and come into our triangle pose. I like to use either the back of the hand, but mostly the ball of the hand to press away from that shin. That really fires up my left side body. Make sure your left knee doesn't walk. And you can look down. Remember that's an opposing spiral. The heart's lifting to the right, and you can be looking down to the left. Or twist me. Nice. So let's inhale up. Triangle. Begin to bend our front knee. Hands to hips. Square your heart towards that front knee. Shift onto your left foot and let the right knee. Flex the foot. Press your shoulders back. Draw the shoulders from the ears. Bend your left knee a couple of times. Just calming down. Keep the left knee bent as you bring that right thigh onto the left. Squeeze the legs, finding your edge of bind. Lower the hips. Then we'll bend our left arm. Right arm underneath and around. Draw the elbows down and into the chest. Feel it fire up. Breathe into this deep compression. Everything's hugging to midline here. You're very strong. From the foot to the crown of the head, reaching to the sky. Maybe stay or begin to hinge and lift that right leg. You can once again, you can let go of your eagle arms if you need to. Reach those arms further forward. If you have eagle arms, squeeze them. Lifted leg, toes are active. Breathe, feel that grounded leg and foot working. And we'll slowly hinge up and the left knee. Bring that right knee a little wider. Find your edge. Hug those elbows in and down. And then fly it out. Oh. And down. Oh, feeling good. All right, maybe a sip of water here. We're getting ready to go into Malasana squat. So if you need a blanket or your mat rolled up under your heels, take time to do so. Be mindful. Me, I'm still using my blanket a little bit. I might get back to that full spot. I don't know. But we'll come wide with our feet, fingertips to the floor, maybe take time to shift into your squat. All right. 
if you are using a prop under the hips, you can even sit on a block or two. Try to still press away from it, all right? And as you use your arm and leg connection here, don't just let the arms press the hips out. Yes, let them press a little, but feel the legs still hug back onto the arms. Feel the spine telescope, the shoulders drop from the ears, the toes lift a little, pelvic floor belly strong. And just feel that activation, it's quite dynamic. But if you feel like just rounding down and chilling out today, and that would feel good, or left arm goes wide, hand to the floor, right arm up for a twist. Yeah, here we go, twisting again, right? And if it feels kind of tight, probably need to do it then. But don't let it be excessive, excruciating, where it causes greater tension. If you can feel it releasing some tension, it can pull in the lower back, so you've got to be careful here. Nice. And breathe. Recognize if you can soften your gaze anymore, if you know, you're getting all caught up in your surroundings at any time. And notice what you can notice. Now, at any time through this, you can go onto your back or go to forward fold. Um, but we're going to maybe work towards our crow or crane pose. Or I always like to set up crow push-ups. No arm balance, just a lot of nice activation. So if you do your crow or crane, feel free to. Otherwise, we're going to lift our heels, bring our hands far forward. All right, the key here is to keep the knees bent as much as you can so the hands can stay flat and the heels lifted the whole time. We're going to lift our hips and bring our toes closer together. From here, press away from the earth. Feel that belly draw through the spine. Lift your heels higher. Begin to shift forward. Bend the elbows. Hug them. Set the knees on the back of the arm. Pause. What does it take to press and lift back where you started with the heels lifting? And do those very slowly, forward and back. Even if you do crow or crane pose, this activates everything that you utilize in the pose. So you might do it two or three times and then go to your pose. You might stay, shift a little forward, keep looking forward, lift one foot, pause, maybe lift the other. And breathe, press away from the earth. Try to draw the belly to the spine, the sump, the back to the sky, puff it out. Nice. And we'll release it all down, and we're going to find puppy pose. I'm crazy. All right, so puppy pose. Um, this very much goes into the thoracic and mid back. So if it's too much, back off. You can always shift the hips more forward, or you can bring a blank or a block up under your forehead as well. So hips over knees with an exhale. Slide our arms forward, either coming to our forehead, our nose, or deeper yet, your chin. All right, if it's tight right away in your shoulders, take your arms wider or come up. Give yourself a few breaths here, maybe a sigh to let that sympathetic nervous system go. I like to go ahead and shift my hips just a smidgen forward, reach my arms further, and my chest really opens up more to the floor and it feels good. And we're breathing. The back bend here, so make sure you're breathing. Blood pressure and heart rate going up. So if you came to your nose, your chin, come to your forehead. If it's available, press through spider fingers, elbows off the floor. You're pressing away to those fingers and trying to draw the hips back. This is very dynamic too, so breathe. Nice, and we'll slowly lower our elbows down and work our way up seated. Ooh, so I'm going to open this up to emergence. Um, some of you have been with me a bit now, and I'd like to give you all an opportunity to do whatever you like. I am going to come closer to my screen so I can look at you, pan through and see if I can see you guys. Remember, you can always do legs up the wall or even up the couch. And this, you can just stay here, but I like to inhale, lift the hips up, lift the heels, exhale, round it down slowly, lifting the toes. You can stay with that or even go into a shoulder stand from here. You might keep the wall or lose the wall, even your plow. And, but you know, it's open to dolphin, shoulder stand, headstand, anything you guys like. 
like I said, I'm going to come in closer. Okay, Stephanie, straighten up a little bit more. Come on, babe. Yes, draw the chest from the chin. Beautiful. Maybe play with um, reaching one foot behind you long. And then reach the other higher to the sky. Feel that space open up. Yes, feels good. Can't see Joe and Sandy. <laughs> Yay. Beautiful. Let's see. Woo. There you go, Marsha. Yes, play with those legs. Play with some eagle legs too, Marsha. That will really mix it up a bit. Yeah, how far can you bend those knees? Yeah, really changing that center of gravity. Use the back of both legs there, Amy. Really lift with them. Beautiful. Remember, broaden that chest to lower it down a bit. Maybe bend your knees, Amy, and bring your toenails to the wall for scorpion. Yes. If you're not sure, if you can't remember, I'll help you. There you go, Steph. There you go. If you're in shoulder stand, maybe take both legs behind you in plow pose. If the toes come to the floor, release the hands from the back. Lift out the back of the legs, lengthen through the heels, and tiptoe your toes to one side. Don't overdo the twist, and then tiptoe them to the other. Yes, keep them together and just kind of tiptoes like Fred Flintstone. Twinkle, 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 twinkle. That'll keep the core engaged, too. Yes, feels really good. You feel those arms working for you and shoulder stand, too. Be intuitive when you need a break, coming out. Yes. Beautiful guys, inversion playground, yes. Oh, and I'm sorry I didn't set it up. I hope you're breathing. I hope you pause everywhere you go, even when you come out of your pose. There you go, Cynthia. Mm -hmm. Really lift, press to your foundation, Cynthia. Try to find some space here, squeeze those legs. Yes, try to feel expansive, like you're not sinking into anything. Beautiful. All right, uh, majority of people did um, a shoulder stand, so we should find a fish pose, a matsyasana. If you did something else and you need a child's pose, feel free to go there. But our fish pose, matsyasana, it's another back bend, good for lightening our mood, great for sinuses. Our thumbs will be together touching like this, but we're gonna sit on them on our tailbone. We're gonna work our elbows closer together. Your legs are hugging. You're pointing your toes yet fan them out. Keep them that way. Inhale, lift from the heart. Exhale, come to the elbows. Let the head go back. Inhale, lift from the heart again. Exhale, let your head go back to its edge. But from here now, all the while, feel the heart lifting like it's being drawn to the sky. It doesn't matter if you come to the top of your head or not. You're really hugging those elbows, pressing away from the earth, and your heart's lifting. Keep the legs squeezing, toes active. Key. Beautiful. And just breathe. It's a nice one to hold a little bit. When you are ready to come out of it, inhale, lift from the heart. Come out of it. You might rock side to side. That's okay, but keep lifting from the heart. Nice. We're going to take it from here and come to our hands and knees. We're going to work towards pigeon pose. Okay, let me check our time here. I feel like I've been talking forever. Um, Actually, we're not going to come to pigeon. Um, we are going to do a seated pigeon here, okay? All right. So our feet are somewhat forward, and our hands are behind, fingers forward a little to the side. If it's too much on your shoulders, take your hands a little wider, okay? That can also make it a little easier. All right, so from here, we're going to lift our right heel onto our left thigh. I'm going to get backwards here. See how my heel is on the thigh? If you can't do that, then the ankle goes on the thigh, but try to have the heel. That's gonna give you a little bit more tension, a little more room for finding a deeper edge. All right? So the toes are open, the knee is opening to the side. You can always just stay here or go onto your back, but if it's available, we're gonna inhale, lift our hips into reverse tabletop. Toes open, maybe pulse the hips a little, let the head go back, press away from the earth, heel and fingertips and breathe and then maybe find stillness can you feel that knee just kind of open up a little more to the side but keep the toes active protecting that knee joint nice and then we'll slowly lower down to our hips send your left leg to sky 
You still got the foot and leg connection here, hands to hips. Both feet are active. Can you roll it up to a boat? Yeah, and then release it down. So once again, your feet are somewhat forward. Use that left hand maybe to place the left foot on the thigh, just below the knee, not on the knee joint. Toes open, hands behind to your edge. And on an inhale, lift those hips up. Toes open, knee to the side, maybe pulse a few times. And breathe, squeezing those glutes. All right, then find stillness. Maybe that leg can just open or soften a little more to the side. Nice. And we'll slowly roll it down to our hips, onto our back, right leg up, flex the foot. Pause, hands to hips, I like that. And then leading with the back of that right leg, rolling it up to boat, reach for that heel. Nice. All right, release it down. So this is where we're gonna utilize our prop, whether it's a rolled up towel or a ball or a block. And we're gonna place it between our knees, right? And just squeeze it, feel how that feels to really activate that squeezing. You can keep the squeezing as a pulsing or just a constant squeeze, but feel it, know what it feels like, and know what it feels like when you lose it, okay? So from here, we're going to go to our bridge first. Walk those heels in. Now your feet might not be as wide because you're squeezing something here, all right? Your feet might be a little closer than usual. Rock, rock your arms closer into the rib cage. Inhale, lift the hips up. Draw the chest from the chin. Keep that squeezing. We're going to find a very fluid movement here, and you're going to use your feet as well. So we're going to inhale, lift our hip, heels. Exhale, round the spine down, but don't let the hips touch. Lower the heels. Inhale, lift it up. So you're finding a nice fluid wave motion. You're almost like pedaling through the feet, and those hips are not going to the floor. You're finding a little hover space. This is kind of a small movement. You might need to work your feet back again. They might drift a little forward. We're creating a lot of stability here in our hips and our lower back. And we're really strengthening the core here. Trying to figure out what kind of dog party is going on downstairs. Down there, they're barking away. All right, about two more maybe. If you're not done already. And then we'll lower the hips down, lift the heels. Maybe find that transition where we rock it side to side. Make sure you flex the feet. Remember that uh, makes the legs lighter, protects the lower back. Do you need the knees further away or closer in today? And one more thing, once again, maybe hug it in like an egg. Breathing, breathing, just feeling that sweet stretch. And from here, we're going to open up to happy baby. Remember, you can always do one leg at a time and maybe get some rotation in that hip. Do the other leg, get some rotation, and then try both. See if that helps. Please. Remember to have a nice hand and foot connection. Flex feet. Roll the tailbone away. Tuck your chin a little. Soften your gaze and just feel the dynamic part of this pose. We've got a lot of activation going here, trying to peel the rib cage down through the hip creases away from the shoulders. Give yourself a few breaths here. Remember knees nice and wide, maybe towards the earth. Remember we should always try to find the pose and then maybe find something else, whether you want to rock it out. Again, play with your legs a little bit. If you bend one knee, bend both legs in and then just straighten one leg at a time, try to isolate it and not move the whole body, but just moving that arm and leg. A little sneaky core work here, and it's very mindful, stabilizing. Or if you want to keep it soft and wiggly, do that too. But it feels good and playful. All right, so from here, we're going to get a little leg stretch. We're going to extend our legs to our edge. They might be wide or straight up, and the knees might be bent, but we're going to walk our fingers towards our toes and draw the toes down. Maybe roll the tailbone away again. Feel that extra stretch on the back of the legs. And 
it is an inversion here. Our legs are higher than our heart, so we're really draining the blood into our heart and lungs for a nice cleansing effect. Breathing nice, and then we'll slowly lower everything down. Recognize if you need a few windshield wipers side to side, or you need to find that transition again. We're going into our spinal twist, so I'd like for you to make sure you have one to two blankets or blocks available, all right? And if at any time this is too much, um, just back off, okay? It's gonna create tension maybe in parts of the body that is too much. All right, so we're going to um, have our feet nice and wide on the mat, take our knees to the right. Now right away, my left knee is not touching the floor, so I'm gonna place the blanket up under my left knee so it feels supported. All right, and from here, I'm gonna look up, make sure my knee is, my left knee is straight down from the hip. And then I'm gonna place my right heel on top of that left thigh. Now, if your right um, knee is off the floor here and it's too much tension, go ahead and take a moment and place a pillow or a blanket under your right knee. It's all good. You can even keep your right foot flexed. Arms wide and maybe look to the left. Recognize if you need a blanket or a pillow under one of your shoulders. That's good too, that'll help you relax. Looking opposite the knees, have a nice exhale and let your right hip just kind of soften. And now go to your breathing, watch your breath from beginning to end. Let's let go of the busyness of the mind, that monkey mind. And now recognize maybe other parts in the body that you're feeling this. If it's too much tension on your left hip or thigh, just unstack that right heel and just bring it inside that left thigh. Yeah, onto that blanket or whatever and let it relax there. You'll still feel a twist. You just don't want to feel um, an overactivation. You want to feel a nice balance where you feel a stretch and a twist, but not where you're fighting it and tension is building. I really feel this in my right hip and glute area because after the hip surgery, it's all that scar tissue, so it feels good to me. But I feel it in my left hip too, and the thigh. So just taking time in the spinal twist to really feel some space. Some softening. We'll slowly unstack our right foot, bring it to the floor, knees come up, and then lift your hips, recenter, and set them down. Exhale, take your knees over to the left. Readjust a prop maybe under that right knee, and you might lift that left heel onto the right thigh. See if that left knee would appreciate a blanket. Sorry, I didn't say this on the other side, but if you're kind of deep here and can reach that right hand for the right foot, that's cattail pose. That might, might draw that foot more towards the hip. Feel a deeper stretch in that right thigh. Look to the right if you can, prop up any shoulders that need it, and just begin to breathe. Recognize if you're focusing on the outward side and getting um, distracted, or can you close those eyes and tune in and observe what's going on. And bring your awareness to parts of the body that would enjoy just a little extra softening for your awareness and your breath, awareness to that part of the body. Wow. Twisting is sweet. I think I can hold this like a yin pose here for 10 minutes. But you can do that. You have time, right? I'm not going anywhere. Unstack that foot. Slowly press to the heels as you lift the hips. Turn, lower it back down. Recentering. Find a transition that's good for you, whether it's this one here or anything, any shape or any pose. Maybe you need a brief cloud pose or another happy baby. Let it be what it is and enjoy and be present and feel the sweetness of the moment. Yeah, and you're breathing still, okay? When you are ready, just set up for Shavasana. We'll do that. All right, so um, 
you might do legs up the wall or legs up the couch and then bend your knees and let your um, calves rest on the seat of the couch. If the couch is too low, just set up a, a pillow or something up under the calves. So you can get a nice restorative inversion through your Shavasana too. And then if you're going, yeah, that doesn't work for me, that's okay. We're always just trying on new things and seeing if they were keeping the body guessing so we don't get into those ruts of samskara that, you know, just the ruts, all right? We want to keep our body guessing and keep it nice and balanced, all right? So when you're ready to be still in Shavasana, have a nice inhale, exhale out your mouth. Only we're not going to be still just yet. I want you to point your big toes in towards one another. Let your feet be kind of wide. Point your big toes in towards one another and allow them to flop out to the side. And we're gonna do it multiple times. You're really trying to let your thighs find a jiggle wiggle. And when they find a true jiggle wiggle that you're not controlling, the hips and the lower back also release, as well as those thighs. And it feels good, yeah. So it's instant gratification. You're finding some playfulness here, but you're really feeling some instant relief. It feels good. So once you're done jiggle wiggling, resolve to be still. Bring your awareness to your mouth. Pause there. Just be there. And now allow your tongue to soften from the roof of the mouth. Just feel that little movement. And now allow your lips to part generously and begin to feel the skin melt from the face through the muscle to the bone. That's the masseter of the jaw releasing all that tension that we hold constantly. And just feel the wave after wave of melt through the eye sockets and the nasal passages all the way through the ears. You might feel it go to the base of the skull Yes, deeper yet, you know, through the sinuses, the eyes. So maybe you can begin to feel the hair follicles just kind of tingle and release too. Enjoy hovering there with all that, the multiple layers of melt and release here. When you are ready to move on, mindfully allow the weight of the head to surrender, feel it go. Allow the neck to soften, the shoulders, the biceps, through the elbows, through the forearms, through the wrists, through the hands, and out the fingers. Feel the melt. The chest sinks in, as well as the belly, feeling the internal organs begin to soften even into the pelvis. Just feel that sinking or weightlessness, whatever it is, let it be. And just feel the hips kind of surrender and melt out to the side. We hold so much tension there, let them go. Once they go, the thighs just seemingly feel like they can roll out to the side too and melt a little more. The knees soften. The calves kind of sink. The shins. The ankles. And feel a sweep down the shins, across the top of the feet, to the tips of the toes down the arches of the feet, softening, and now just allow the heels to sink and melt. Recognize if you need to backtrack, or maybe that is just the final sweep and you can maintain. Recognizing if tension builds anywhere, use your awareness to just soften it so this oxygenated blood can surge through the body, unhindered, cleansing and detoxing. Whether you feel a sense of heaviness or weightlessness, surrender into that, whichever it is, even more.
You can linger here as long as you like. But if intuitive movement calls you as you begin to awaken your breathing, maybe just observing the energy of the breath or intuitive movement, enjoy the energy you feel there, maybe on fingertips and toes. Even a long body stretch if that calls you. Stillness can be yours throughout. And if you like, hands to heart center, avoiding the face right now. And just still feeling the breath, the rise and the fall. How connected you feel with everything. It's like your matrix moment. You are so observant on so many layers. So find gratitude once again that you're breathing freely. Allow that smile on your heart to creep to your lips and allow it to happen throughout the day as you notice those small joys in front of you in a moment. Namaste.